And now, it's reptile time. Snakes, turtles, lizards, all that kind of cool stuff. And in this case, I do have tons and tons of video to show you, so I'm just going to jump around to a bunch of different places, in particular Trinidad and Galapagos, but also uh, something from Africa, the mammal. We'll deal with mammals later. And let's start with a little clip of one of my daughters, maybe 15 years ago in California, and a gopher snake that she found who really liked biting her. Ow! Bite you? Ow! It's okay, it's okay. Ow. It's okay. <laughs> This is the snake that will not leave us alone. We've already removed it from the house three times. But it just seems to like us. It's a pretty cool snake. <sighs> that video was from Trinidad and that snake was trying to get into the research house that we stay at. The snakes we see much more commonly are much more dangerous, and uh, those include the Fertilance, which is here, and my colleague, uh, Pierre-Olivier Montiglio from UCAM, is looking at a small one that we've just seen while walking along the trail. Fertilances look just like the leaves, and so they're quite cryptic, and we miss them a lot as we walk around. Now, here is something truly weird. So I've been going to Trinidad for 10 plus years, and never seen one of these. It's called an Amphisbanian. Looks like a snake, but it's not a snake. It's a reptile um, of a different group. And you see what there is, that's a, the threat display. So it makes you think it's dangerous or venomous when it's not, but also it raises up both its tail and its head, thereby potentially confusing the predator. We're gonna jump to Uganda. And this is a, a viper that they were that was just swimming along in the water. So snakes are often very comfortable in the water as well. Almost certainly my very favorite cool thing in Galapagos is the marine iguanas. They're just like the coolest animals ever. And they spend a lot of their time outside of the water, basically just basking on the black rocks. Now this is partly for thermoregulatory purposes because they forage in the water or down in the intertidal, which can be quite cold because the Galapagos is subject to upwelling even though it's on the equator. So they come out and they bask most of the day and then they go out and forage for, very, for um, relatively short periods of time, either underwater or uh, in the intertidal. See that little spray there? That was actually salt glands that they snort salt out of, uh, basically by their nostrils. And then, of course, they also mate on land and lay eggs on land. And the males uh, uh, fight aggressively for females to mate with females, and females fight over nesting spaces. And you can see that they use opposition there. That first, of, they're very flat to the ground. Uh, they don't have their legs underneath them. And then, as they rotate their left front forward, they rotate their right back forward at the same time, thereby creating balance off the opposing two legs. And then it's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, dragging their long tail after them. So here's a front-on view where you see that the opposition of the front and the back from the two sides. Super cool animals. Now what about in the water? Well, of course, marine iguanas are also very good in the water, and that's where their tail comes in handy. So you see they put their back legs and their tail together, 
and they sort of undulate it almost as though it were a snake in the water. Now, if you watch the fourth Aliens movie, uh, you'll see that they modeled the way the aliens swim underwater, and they swim just like this uh, in the um, in the Alien movies. Now, what they do, uh, as I was saying, is they forage mainly uh, underwater or in the intertidal, and what they forage on is algae on the rocks. And so you uh, have a guy here that's um, munching away on the algae right in the intertidal area there. Marine iguanas aren't the only really cool lizard in Galapagos. These are lava lizards. And you see his, he's, he's in a hot um, uh, parking lot, basically, by the airport. You see he's got his toes raised up, probably because it's just so hot. But then he senses that there might be a rival, and he comes over and does push-ups. So these push-ups are a common display that uh, many lizards have. Now let's go underwater in Galapagos and talk about another uh, reptile, and that is turtles. So these are marine turtles that, of course, spend the vast majority of their lives at sea, where they're very elegant, flying through the water, in essence, flying through the water, primarily with their front limbs, but also with their back limbs. There they do most of their foraging, spend almost their entire lives. And then eventually, um, they'll make their way back to their natal sites. Remember how salmon, I was saying, return back to their natal sites to spawn? So do sea turtles. They come back every few years, go onto the beach uh, where they're quite clumsy, but they use that same sort of swimming motion to dig a nest in which they lay their eggs and then away back to the ocean. So this is sped up uh, four times speed. This is a turtle. Normally they nest at night, but this one happened to be there in the day and this one's actually in Australia. I do generally really like talking to you about critters out in nature, but when it comes to reptiles, I have a special opportunity within my own house. Let's go check it out. Come on. Da -da -da -da. This is my wife, Heather, and this is her ball python breeding facility. She didn't know I was coming, no, but didn't. we've been recording a bunch of videos so that I can tell you about various cool things about lizards and the amniotic egg and how they get away uh, from water. And so we're going to do all that. So here's a bit of a teaser uh, for the stuff that we have coming up later. Mating time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take her out. In the natural world, she would just be incubating these for about two months. Um, but the problem with that is uh, the temperature is not going to be as high. Um, um, and she's not going to be feeding during that time. And uh, I, for her health, I would like her to eat. So she is a new mother, so she's a little bit concerned about what we're going to do. Um, if you're going to get bit, this is a great time. So you have to be careful. All right, so I'm gonna weigh her. 1,200, so the last time I weighed her, she, she, she lost about 500 grams, um, which is actually significant for her size. Yeah, for about 100 grams each. That's the embryo right there. Very so you cool. have uh, around the outside of, you have, um, there's a, uh, a tissue layer called the chorion, which has got um, all of these vessels associated with it. So it's picking up oxygen, it's diffusing through the shell, and then um, it's getting uh, routed to the embryo. And you can see that large vessel. And my daughter is all, well, she's all about the snakes too, but she's really all about the geckos. So this is her her gecko facility here. And so she'll spend some time telling us about geckos. What species is this? Uh, these are crested geckos. Okay, so tell me something cool about a gecko. Um, they're sticky paws. They, they form um, molecular bonds with whatever they're touching, which allows them to stick. Cool. They can grab onto anything, right? Like glass and yeah, they plastic can walk glass. in your hand and <laughs> good one. Wait, 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 wait. 
Super cool. Good night to the geckos. No, no, it's good morning. Good morning to the geckos because they're up all night, of course.